Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this wonderful morning. We come to you today as the body of Christ, your bride, to seek your wisdom, understand the mystery of the word of God, to let the seed of the word of God grow into our heart and become part of us so that we can become part of you. We can imitate you in everything that we do. Father, with the authority of Jesus Christ, I bind every spirit of distraction, every spirit of doubt, every spirit of lies. I shut your mouth and put you in the until such time when we are finished with this lesson. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. <clears throat> I'm not, we're not going to obviously read every single verse of this chapter. So I highlighted what we're going to be talking about so that um, everybody can understand what's going on. So um, the first lesson of this, of this chapter you, go, you jump to verse 29. Verse 29 of chapter 17. And I got King James Version, so, you know, whatever version you have. It says, How be it that every nation made gods of their own and put them in the house of the high places which the Samaritan had made. Okay, and then jump to... Uh, Verse 31, basically 30 and 31 is saying that in this city, in this city, everyone worships different things. Everyone, depends on where you're from, they made their own idols, they made their own gods, and then they worship their own gods in the city. And even one of them, in verse 31, even one of them birth the children in fire to their God. Did anybody see that? Um, even get, get, get chapter um, 17 or verse 31 now. King 2, King, second King, second King, second King chapter 17, verse 31, it says that even some of them they worship their gods in such a way that they take their own children and they burn them up like a like a burnt sacrifice. Now you you, you think that for someone to take their kid and burn them in, in the altar for the god is so unthinkable, unthinkable. So disgusting, so um, what is it? What I want to say? So despicable, right? I mean, how can you take your own kid and burn it in uh, to whatever it is that you believe, right? Okay. Well, the Holy Spirit tells me that He wants to tell you that. Those who don't know the Lord, there is a God that tells you that if it's, if you have a baby that's not convenient, abort it out. And I don't know about you, but when you when, when the baby gets aborted, they take a little suction cup, a little suction food, and they stick it in there, and they start sucking the baby heart out, arms, legs, head. They just start sucking things out. It's not like they it all out and then now one one piece of baby and then they bury it. It's just like it's just like sucking one piece at a time. And 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 if you see the sun of the baby actually was it's trying to avoid getting sucked in the process of being aborted. So yes, when we say when we read the word of God, we say that these these people they they burn their own children on an altar for the worship of God. 
But you know, for those who don't know the God of this, of this Bible, and we hear the lies of Satan, which is the God of this world. And uh, many around different things all know. The, uh, the, um, the Hagai, and the Ito, and the Lake, and the Hook, Hook King, Hook King, and the Tai, and the Tai, and the Tai, the Tai, and the Tai, and the Tai, the Tai, and the Tai, and the Tai, and the Tai, Okay. Now, why is it important that I want you to know about the city? This little city here that has all kinds of different gods. The one worship one guy, one worship another guy. If you go into any Asian family, the majority of them will watch worship Buddha. You see a big Buddha statue and they worship that statue like it, like it is a god right there sitting in there. Family room. They respect it. Um, you know, if they were to give it away or if they were to not want it anymore, they have to respectfully dispose of that statue, that clay, as though it was a god inside of that clay. That's the deception that Satan has on these people. I know that because I come from that, from that environment. From that uh, background, where my mom would carry home a statue of Buddha. Oh my goodness, God. She was two, three feet bigger than me. And it was huge. Um, they had to, <clears throat> it was difficult for them to get it in the door. But anyway, uh, um, When, when the world worships quote unquote gods, um, <clears throat> the demon tell them that you know that you have to respect it, you have to do all this stuff. But then when the enemy comes, the enemy comes to destroy the city. <clears throat> this is what the enemy says. Now, now we jump to uh, chapter 18. Jump to chapter 18. Okay. So um, chapter 18 describes Hezekiah, the king Hezekiah. And Hezekiah uh, obeyed God. He worshiped the Lord. And he, he tried to get rid of all the Astral pole and all these things that people worship in his city. Okay. And uh, and so it got the attention of a, a, a bigger nation, the Caesarian nation. And so in um, in that um, just a few years after he got become king. Now king of Syria, which is a much larger kingdom that have numerous soldiers, much, much more than King Hezekiah. All right? And uh, he says to, and then he sends, he sends his, uh, I don't know, his speakers or, or representative to, to, the, to the fortress of King Hezekiah. Okay, I'm going uh, yeah, I'm um, your um, uh, Syrian. Right? Like, I'm, I'm like you, rất là nhiều lính, rất là nhiều hơn lính, nhiều hơn là lính của ông vua Hezekiah. Mà Hezekiah là ông là là cái người con cái của Chúa, ông tin là ông, ông nghe lời Chúa. And so, uh, uh, King uh, the, the, the King Syria, which is the the king that 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 has the larger army. He's been going around and he's been um, destroying all the little kingdoms around King Hezekiah's area, okay? Including the one uh, city that has all the, the different gods in it. So now he, 
the king Syria, the, the king that has uh, the larger of the army, he sends his speaker over, representative over, and he says, he says, uh, and, and they, they even try to speak in Hebrew to, to these people. And he says, don't let your king Hezekiah fool you because all the kingdom around you, they have their own gods. They pray to their own gods. And our king destroyed them all. None of their gods protected them. What makes you think that your God is any different? Now, that's a person going to um, uh, King Hezekiah's kingdom and saying this. But I tell you that in your life, when somebody pray over, over you, you know what comes knocking on your door? The same spirit that's saying this is the same spirit that says to you, you know how many times you've been prayed over by one person or another person? You know how many times, how many years you have got this sickness or this whatever it is that you have? What makes you think that this does this person pray for you? that you're going to be healed. That's the spirit that's speaking to King Hezekiah, but now it's, it's inside of a person. I'm telling you that that spirit is speaking to every single one of your ears. It's, it's called a spirit of doubt. Okay, um, you are serious, man. I come you on you. I don't you in there. I don't send
So we are laying on the mercy that you will save us. Ông vua của Hezekiah này nè, nói là à, ăn năn không nhịn đói ba ngày. Kêu mấy ông lính của ông cũng cũng nhịn đói luôn ba ngày. Để nên ép từ ba ngày, ông mới nói, nên ông nói với, 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 với dân chúng ảnh là ta không có cách nào mà để đói khó được với cái, cái, cái ông vua này. Ông có rất là nhiều lính, rất là nhiều lính hơn mình. Mà lính ông còn bự cũng to con nữa thì ta không có cách nào để đối phó được với ông ông vua này hết nên ta chỉ nương tựa đến đức ông trời thôi ông trời thì cứu chúng ta so when he spoke this humble confession so God spoke to to his prophet to tell him that that tomorrow tomorrow is the day that the, the, the army of King Syria is going to come and attack them. They say that the arrows is going to be so numerous it's going to cover cover the, the, the sky. And so the so God said to them, okay, that there will be no arrow of the enemy will ever penetrate to your to your fortress, and that your enemy will be defeated. They will come in one way and they will leave. The same way they came in. Okay? And so what happened? What happened? When we humble ourselves in our life, look at my opinion, look at that. My boss, how you can get it now? Man, take man, woman, or you take woman, you have a woman. The moon, the moon, the moon, the moon, the moon, the moon, so then at that night, God sends an angel, one angel of God, to come down. And that's in um, verse 19, chapter, no, um, chapter 19, verse, verse 33. And it came to pass that night, the angel of the Lord went out and smoked in the camp of the Syrian a hundred four score and five thousand. That's a hundred and eighty five thousand Syrian soldiers in one night. Oh, then God, Khan, King Su, Sunay, and Yi, Motam Tam Chuk Nyan, Motam Tam Chuk Nyan, Lin, Wakuda, Mikia, Dola. Chapter 19, verse 35. I want you to think of, uh, I don't know how many, what's the population of, of Frisco or whatever city you live, but this is 185,000. I don't, I, I, I don't know what the population is, but that's a huge number. And then one night, an angel of the Lord came down and took the life of 185,000 soldiers. And then when the king came to the soldier and he saw everybody die, everybody, not, not even one soldier left alive. So he went back home. And when he went back home, while he was worshiping his God, his statue, two of his son came in with a sword and killed him. Yeah. And they ran. So, <clears throat> what's the lesson? What's the message? Đấy là họ đây đều biết mấy giờ là nhiên giờ, không có biết được có bao nhiêu tiếng, không biết giờ đâu. So, uh, yeah. Oh man, I really started the time. Okay, so anyway, uh, 
several lessons we can learn from here from this story. Number one is when the when when the when your enemy demons the voices that you hear in your ear in your head that's your enemy because the Bible says that we don't fight against flesh and blood. So when <clears throat> when you're going and you're fighting against something, the enemy will come and whisper in your ear, and they will say that you know that person's got more money than you. <laughs> That person's got um, more resource than you. Uh, there's no way that you can be able to defeat that person. Same scenario here. We we have the same scenario in, in our in our life. Fighting an enemy that's more wealthier, more whatever, and yet the Lord deliver him defeated. Okay, he's not, nothing I've done. He, he hired a very good lawyer, and his lawyer always want to make me look bad. Yeah, that's the job. And, uh, anyway, I, I don't know what storm, what battles you're fighting, but most of the time, the battle that you fight seems to be Hopeless seems to be like there's no way I can I can defeat that person, the enemy, because they got a lot more money, they got a lot more this and a lot more that. But that's in the flesh. That's in the you know this thing you can see with your eyes. What you don't see, which is what when uh, I can't remember the, the the prophet's name, but he had a servant. Maybe it's uh, Elijah. And so the servant looking up in the hills and he sees all his soldiers coming up against him. And he says, and he's looking at his master and he's saying, I'm so afraid we're going to be killed. You look at your circumstances, your finances, your relationship, and you say, oh man. How are we going to turn this around? How are we going to have money for it to cover this and cover that? And if you only use your eyes to, to solve problems, then you limit it. You're closing the door to what God can do that you cannot see. Okay? Who in this story I mean, they, 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 they're in the story, so I'm in the story with my story. Who here could even think that in one night, an angel of God would come and destroy 180,000 of the enemy? I mean, that's that's a whole city. You know that, right? I mean, again, I don't know what the population of Frisco, but definitely Lil' Elm. We don't have no 180,000 people in Lil' Elm. Um, maybe my my had fifty. I don't know. Maybe the population went up and got sixty now. But no, no, we're not close. We're just having church. You can come in and sit there. And we're almost done, so that uh, you can. You can serve. Yes, of course. So. What I'm telling you that is that when God gets involved, you see a miraculous event in your life. Let me tell you something that happened yesterday. There was a um, a friend of a friend who I never met came. I mean, text me first, and then she came here. And at the age of 28, she had a stroke. That basically numb, numb the left side of her body, right? She couldn't feel, she had no feeling in her hands. Her hand is like this, and her feet is completely numb. So I, I told her that, you know, I, I, I pray for people that have 20 years of issues and they walk out here like nothing happened in the last 20 years. 
So, uh, you know, just let the Lord uh, heal you. And so I saw pulling these de demonic spirits off of her body. And then I speak restoration and healing of every cell of her body from the, from the right side of her um, right side of her brain because if your brain is damaged on this side then this side is the one that that gets um, um, paralyzed so I God showed me that there was a a spiritual scorpion that is attached to her right side of her forehead uh, her head her brain so we took that off and took the spirit off of her neck all the way out her arm and there was a serpent that was anchored to her hip and wrapped itself around her leg all the way to the bottom of her toe. So I removed all those things and then I command every cell of her body to be restored to perfection that by his wounds it will be divinely healed. In that very same time that I'm speaking, <coughs> I hold her hand and I try to pull her hand out. But, you know, this has been going on for 20 years. So um, she couldn't let it, she couldn't, she couldn't you know, straighten her hand. But what she could do, she, what happened at that time was that she said she feel tingling sensation all the way down her arm, you know, this arm here, and all the way down her toes. This is a leg that's been numb for 20 years. She's been this way since 28, and you know, this is 20 years later. So her leg and her hand has been numb. She could not, she could not feel any part of her arm. But me speaking and pulling these things out and speaking restoration in Jesus' name. Life starts coming back to her hand. And I told her to continue to give thanks to Jesus, continue to thank Jesus. And hopefully one day you come through that door and you'll be waving your hand to the one that's now and say hi to me. That's, that is what is in store for every single one of us. I'm no special. I'm just obedient. I just read the word of God and I believe everything. Even though I'm sitting here coughing, you know, coughing through the songs and coughing through the night, but that does not deter me from believing that by his wounds I am. I keep speaking it over and over again because the enemy wants me to have this problem because he doesn't want me to speak. You see, he, he's trying to wear me down, get me tired so that I so that I can say, I just keep up and, and don't say, I rebuke this, this life from Satan. Thank you, Jesus, by your wounds of him. But I continue to do so over and over and over and over again until they get the message. So, uh, so far I told you a story, right? And if, uh, I want you to understand that the story is a story that happens in every single one of our lives. Or if it hasn't happened, it will. You will come against somebody that's going to be more powerful than you, more wealthier than you, and they're going to come in with threats. They're going to threaten you. And then the spirit of, of the enemy comes and says, what makes you think that just because, you know, that you worship God, that he's going to, he's going to save you from this problem or that problem? Exactly like happened here in this story. See, they say, oh, all those people that got gods, we defeated them all. None of their gods saved them. What makes you think your God will save you? So, but we serve, we serve a God that is. Yeah, just put it on the floor. Somebody. Yeah. Um, so you know, we, don't, we don't serve a God that's made out of uh, clay or, or uh, you know, whatever. Matter of fact, God told us that he don't want us to make any images 
any graven image of him. So literally, uh, what you basically you saying is that you go into a church and see this big cross and everybody bow down to worship the cross. That's wrong. That's not God. That's just a representation of what happened to him. That's a reminder. And we don't go and bow down to a piece of wood. The God that we worship is alive. That's why I can speak healing to that lady. And that's why, you know, not just one the lady, but there's many, many times I can tell you how many times that happened. When people come in here and I speak, and then, and then you know, maybe a couple of weeks later or a couple of months later, they come by and say, oh, do you remember praying for me? And I'm like, well, um, no, but I don't want to say that because, you know, I want to be insensitive. But I pray for a lot of people. I don't remember when I pray for you. Uh, oh, yeah, you pray for me and my shoulders, you know, it's healed and this and that. Oh, that's great. But I want to tell you that when you believe in the word of God, when I said to a miracle happens when somebody believes. Because belief is a, it's like an invisible spiritual connection that allows you to connect to heaven. And so you pull heaven um, lifestyle down to earth when you believe. When you believe. Okay? So one, one, one more uh, thing about this story. And that's verse 20. So verse 20, I'm sorry, not verse 20, uh, chapter 20. Hezekiah was warned of his death. Okay. So God spoke to uh, a prophet Isaiah and told Isaiah told, uh, to tell Hezekiah that you're going to die because he was sick. He was sick. And so God basically told um, uh, um, Isaiah, the prophet, to tell the king, Hezekiah, get get your family together and, you know, make sure that everything is in order because you're going to die. So he turns to the wall. He humbles himself. And he, and he prays. And he says, God, You know that in my life, I've lived my life to serve you. Everything I do is to honor you. Can you please spare my life? Because he humbled and immediately <clears throat> when he has problems, he seeks the Lord. Before Isaiah could go out of the kingdom, God spoke to Isaiah and says, turn back and tell Hezekiah. I will give him 15 more years to live. 15 more years to live. And then and then after that, they, they told him to uh, burn some roots, something like that. And he smelled it and immediately his body is healed. So is my question is, whatever you're going through, whatever sickness that the doctor tells you that you have, is that too, too big for, for God? Is that too big for God to say, oh man, if your doctor says this, that's it, you're done. No, absolutely not. This is God telling him that he's gonna die. And by him humbling himself, he changed the heart of God. It changed the heart of God, just like when 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 uh, Abraham was begging for God to spare Sodom and Gomorrah. So he start starting with, if there were fifty righteous people in the city, would you spare the city? And God says, "Yes, I will spare if there's fifty. And then he goes, well, "What? What if there's forty? If there's forty, I will spare the city." And keep going down, keep going down. And I think he stopped at 10, right? He says, no, 10. He says, what if there's only 10 people that are righteous in the city? Would you spare? What I'm saying is that when you humble yourself and you get on your knees and you beg the Lord to have mercy on you, oh, 
Oh, God is merciful. Oh, God is full of mercy. And whatever your doctor says about you, I can tell you, that's, that is just facts that can be changed in a snap of the finger of the Lord. How can you explain somebody has cancer and the next thing they come in and they take an x-ray and it's gone? Maybe the doctor says, I don't know what happened. Maybe something wrong with our instrument. It's the only way they can explain it. So, or the, the fact that somebody that I spoke healing to that has been having so much pain in the last 20 years of her life that she can barely even walk from the door to where the first table is. She was just pain. She had to take nine pills of medication. But after I spoke healing to her, every single pain that she had for the last 20 years, gone. Gone. As though it was a lie. And that's why I tell you, when you experience pain or whatever it is in your body, you say, I rebuke this lie from Satan. For the truth is that by his wounds I'm healed. The truth. This is the truth. God says that let this be the truth and everything else is a lie. So if God says by my wounds uh, you're healed, and your doctor says, um, well, you know, you're gonna you're gonna ha you have this, this, and this, and it's gonna give you, you know, you you might have a couple more years or whatever. If that does not line up with this, that's a lie. You understand? But unfortunately, unfortunately, I've been sharing this with you throughout every single meeting. Whatever you believe, it will manifest in your life. So what do you choose? Do you believe in what the doctor says or do you believe in what God says? He's the one that created your DNA. He knows every chemical makeup of your body. That's why he can make a 90-year-old woman have be pregnant, Sarah. Because, you know, at a certain age, your DNA turns off that, that baby-making process. But he turned it back on because he knows. So if there's sickness in your body, he will turn that, that, that trigger off. And sickness doesn't exist. But you have to believe. You have to believe. And that's the currency of heaven, is belief. Believe in love. Believe in love. So then we're going to end up pretty quick, pretty early. I know we normally get right down 10 30, but uh, you know, I, I'd rather say little and you absorb a lot than for me to say a lot and you absorb a little. And so, I'm going to recap. Whatever battles you're going through in your life, whether it's finance, whether it's relationship, or whether it's physical, the enemy's going to come up there and whisper in your ears and says, whisper doubt. They can make come with them, go with them, then no one's no one even say things like, you know, your uncle, your uncle George had it. Your, 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 your aunt Mary had it. And all down the line of your family had this problem. That's why you have it. And you're not going to escape from it. It's what basically is trying to sell you. And when you have that thought in your mind, you, what you say, you say, in Jesus' mighty name, I break that curse. I reject that lie. And the truth is that by his wounds, I'm healed. By his wounds, I'm healed. You, that's the reason why Jesus went through the 39 whip uh, on his body. Because by his wounds, by, you know, he he got nailed to the cross to save our soul. But this is the, the breakdown of why, why he went through the things he went through. By him getting nailed on the cross and dying 
he took on every sin of, of, of people onto him. And everything that was righteous on him went to us. But when he went through all the 39 plus one whipping on his body, cuts and cool and ripped pieces of flesh out of his body, that's so that you can say by his rules, I him. That's why if you if you haven't seen the, the move of passion, if you look at it again, Jesus even told one of my mentors, you want him to watch that. 40 times or something like that to realize that that's what I went through so that you can be healed. So I don't want ever tell you, uh, hear from you that you're sick. I went through that type of beating so that you can be healed. So the beating on his body is to heal us. And the sacrifice on the cross is to save us. And to transfer the, the blessing of Christ to us, his righteousness to us. Okay, thank you for coming. If anybody have any questions, any, any, anything, we'll go ahead and pray. <laughs> <laughs> Father, I thank you, Lord God, for this wonderful morning. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you brought your, your body here to hear the word of God, to hear the truth, the truth, and the miraculous things that can happen when people believe in the truth and not lean on their own understanding, but believe in your words, in you. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that by your stripes I'm healed. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that by your stripes to every single one of everyone here, whatever physical struggles that they're going through, they too are healed. And help them to believe where their where their belief is lacking. Help them, Lord God. Pull your people out of the lies, the, the, the grip of the lies of Satan. And let them enjoy the wonderful blessing of knowing the true word of God in their life. And they, they, they will experience divine health, divine finances, and divine relationship. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.